There is a place known as the cradle and hatcher of advanced aircraft. Airplanes, missiles, and rockets must be tested by it before they are born. This is the wind tunnel. Our protagonist today, who has devoted himself for wind tunnel research for more than 60 years, and he has made our country's hypersonic wind tunnel system accomplish a leap from following others to leading in the world. Today we meet China's hypersonic wind tunnel founder, Yu Hong Ru. This is a scheduled test of the hypersonic wind tunnel JF-12, independently developed by China. Hours of preparation by the staff are only for a blink of time testing. Accompanied by a loud noise, the wind tunnel with a length of more than 200 meters and a weight of hundreds of tons ignited in an instant. The outside seems to be calm, but the inside is far more exciting. Inside the wind tunnel, the aircraft is stationary and the wind is flowing, which allows us to do heavenly things on Earth. A wind tunnel is to create a sky on the ground. The wind tunnel simulates airflow, flight environment and various possible situations. It is used to verify the stability and flight attitude of the aircraft or missile, and to judge whether the aerodynamic shape design is reasonable and acceptable. During a JF-12 wind tunnel testing, the whole process often takes only a few seconds. And the real effective data from testing results is only within 0.1 seconds. But it is this 0.1 second data that Yu Hongru has struggled with for more than half a century. In the summer of 1957, after the world's first man-made satellite launched, I was asked to research on wind tunnel, and noticed that it was particularly important to us. The wind tunnel is the most important tool in the country to promote the development of aviation and aerospace vehicles. A generation of wind technology not only determines the development level of a generation of aircraft, but also represents a country's scientific research strength. In the 1950s, China was still a blank in the field of hypersonic wind tunnels. Under the guidance of Guo Yangwei, the father of two bombs and one satellite, Yu Hongru started to focus on the hypersonic wind tunnel research. No fund, and no adequate conditions, but you had to find a way to do it. The cheapest way is to use chemical energy. For example, when hydrogen and oxygen are mixed to burn, huge amounts of energy are released. The combustion of hydrogen and oxygen produces a lot of energy. Using this energy to create airflow can simulate the flight state of the aircraft at five times the speed of sound or even higher. But hydrogen-oxygen combustion has a fatal risk, it is easy to explode. When will it explode? How powerful is the explosion? Yu Hongru can only find out by trying, and he must try. We blew up the whole lab. The roof was torn off. Everyone in the Mechanics Institute knew that our group was dangerous, so they told the upper-level leaders that the building must be repaired often, but we kept on doing it. They left the building finally. There are countless aerospace vehicles, planes and missiles that have been tested in the JF-8 shock wind tunnel. But Yu Hongru did not stop. He gave up imitating the commonly known technology and came up with an idea that surprised many people. That is the detonation-driven shock tunnel. Once there was a detonation, I found it to perform exceptionally well. So our thoughts then turned to, from avoiding detonation to actually manager to use detonation. Detonation is a kind of extreme combustion, and the energy produced by the detonation drive far exceeds that of hydrogen-oxygen combustion. With this subversive idea, Yu Hongru began to silently study how to apply this new driving method, which took him 20 years. In the 1990s, Yu Hongru led his team to build the world's first detonation-driven shock tunnel JF-10. At this time, he then had a new idea. Whatever speed and temperature we might experience in the sky, they must be achieved on the Earth. This is called a recurrence wind tunnel. JF-12 was the only recurrent wind tunnel in the world at the time. When we just proposed to build such a wind tunnel, many people in China said I was crazy. 
Yu Hongru's original reverse detonation-driven technology has applied on JF-12. Which broke through the main technical bottleneck of traditional wind tunnels and opened a new era of large-scale aerodynamic experimental equipment construction in China, and leaped from imitation to independent innovation. Today, this scientific research team, which has been passed down for several generations, is about to build the latest generation JF-22 hypersonic speed shock wind tunnel with the largest and top performance in the world. It can produce flight conditions at an altitude of 40 to 100 kilometers, and up to 30 times the speed of sound. It is the cradle for the development of a new generation of aircraft and spacecraft, which can help in developing the reusable space Earth round trip system. It will form a grand aerodynamic test platform that can cover all hypersonic flight corridors. Like developed countries, we can move forward independently. Under his leadership, the next generation of the team began to overcome the difficulties of JF-22 project. There is such a research team in Wairu Science District in Beijing. They have been tackling key issues in the strategic direction of Qian Shuisen's planning and deployment. Over half a century and several generations, they have created the world's largest shockwave wind tunnel with the most advanced overall performance. It has made great contributions to the development of China's aerospace industry. From now on we enter our testing phase. The real problems will be found in this period of testing. Everyone has to be very careful. We move forward step by step from low pressure to high pressure, from air to gas, to ensure our safety. The large machine that Zhang Su Yin and his team are installing and testing is the JF-22, the most advanced ultra-high-speed or so-called hypersonic speed wind tunnel in the world. As the cradle for the development of a new generation of aircraft, the JF-22 ultra-high-speed wind tunnel can levitate at an altitude of 40 to 100 kilometers per hour, up to 10 kilometers per second, equivalent to about 30 times the speed of sound, under working flight conditions. For example, the speed of a general airplane is Mach 0.8, while a fighter jet can fly up to 2.5 times the speed of sound. If we can develop a hypersonic aircraft to fly in the atmosphere at 5 to 10 times the speed of sound, it can reach anywhere in the world in just one or two hours. This shockwave wind tunnel research team originated in the 1950s and 1960s. Under the strategic deployment of Qian Shuisen and Guo Yangwei, the Institute of Mechanics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences established the country's first research team for hypersonic shock wind tunnels. From point of view today, Mr. Qian and Mr. Guo were really masters of looking far ahead. They had foreseen the need for such a technology in China in the future. The wind tunnel is like a cradle of aircraft. With it, we can develop engines and aircraft. This is the passion of our team and the goal that we have been striving for for the last 60 years. If the internationally accepted technology so-called standard is used, the research on the shockwave tunnel can only be imitated abroad. Therefore, the scientific research team chose the detonation-driven method along with new technology. This technical route has long been abandoned internationally. Through decades of work, the older generation of scientists realized theoretical innovation driven by detonation. Through reverse detonation and applied new technology, the problem of unstable wind flow has been successfully solved. After entering the baton of the past generation of scientists, Zhang Songlin led the team to open a large-scale detonation-driven shockwave wind tunnel later in the 1990s. When this wind tunnel project was started, many people said that we would not make it. You waste the country's money and resources. We have been challenged and been successful over the last 10 years. Through this long process, we believe that this technology is mature now, and found the theory is correct. From high temperature materials to forming structures, and to sensor design, the research team has repeatedly explored in no man's land and finally achieved a leap from theoretical innovation to technological innovation. In 2012, the JF-12 shockwave wind tunnel with a total length of 265 meters and a test section of 3.5 meters in diameter was successfully developed. Flying conditions of 5 to 9 times the speed of sound in suspension. The runtime exceeds 100 milliseconds, which is an order of magnitude higher than other shock tunnels of the same type, making it the largest and most advanced shock tunnel in the world. It provides key support for the development of major aerospace products in China. Technology takes 10 to 20 years or more to develop, so we have to endure loneliness. In addition, an innovative concept may not be recognized by everyone. We have to be able to endure criticism, 
we have to withstand wind and rain. Only in this way, I think we can achieve success from theory to technology, from technology to engineering. After the JF-12 shockwave wind tunnel was completed and put into operation, the data indicators and performance were highly recognized by the industry. Jiangsu Lian, however, fell ill. After suffering from a serious illness due to overwork, part of his lungs was cut off. Even when he was still in his hospital bed, he started research of a new generation of shockwave wind tunnels. Because after all, I am doing unprecedented work and researching unprecedented projects. One of the basic ideas of our research and development of the JF-22 wind tunnel is to go to China one day we will have such a space earth shuttle system, which can reduce our current satellite launch and spacecraft launch costs by 90%. From Mr. Qian Shuisen, Mr. Guo Yangwei to Mr. Yu Hongru and then to Professor Zhang, the spirit of the older generation of scientists we have seen has been passed down to the present. In their minds, they all want to serve this country. They rarely care about personal gains and losses. Their influence on us is very big, so we are also following in their footsteps. We also hope to dedicate our youth and our dreams here in the coming decades. As a student of Jiangsu Silver, Han Galai participated in the development of the JF-12 shockwave wind tunnel. In the latest research on the JF-22 hypersonic speed wind tunnel, Galai has become the site leader of the entire project. His goal is to work with the team to build this unprecedented super-large-scale hypersonic wind tunnel. A bursting instant peak power of this new wind tunnel is near to the Three Gorges Dam generating power. Our country is already very strong, but our nation is still rejuvenating. We need to put our personal talents to the fullest in this place. This is our belief. Only by combining your research with national needs can your research results have a high degree of value, and can you show yourself loyalty to the country.